Rotherham's battle for survival continued on and off the pitch. They thought they'd got off to a flyer when Jonathan Fort's cross was handled by Michael Jackson. It was an easy decision for referee Paul Robinson. But Lee Williamson's spot kick was turned round the post by keeper Steve Wilson. The Tranmere joy was short-lived. From this corner, Colin Murdoch's header found Martin Butler, whose volley was sweet and unstoppable. Butler's eighth goal of the season came with just 17 minutes left. Five minutes later, Rotherham were home and dry. Lee Williamson made amends for his penalty miss with a quality cross for Paul Shaw to bundle the ball in. With three wins in five games, Rotherham are just clear of the relegation zone. But the match was marred by a double sending off as tempers flared in the closing stages. Michael Jackson involved in the initial incident with Rotherham's Michael Keane, who then tangled with two Tranmere players. Keane red carded for the third time this season. Rotherham manager Alan Neal said that wasn't satisfactory. Jackson's first sending off, but he's been booked five times this season. Could Nottingham Forest yet make a dramatic bid for promotion in a season that witnessed their lowest footballing ebb? Frank Barlow and Ian McParlin's influence has been huge as Grant Holt added another goal on the turn, Tranmere the latest victims of the Red Revolution. This Forest's ninth game unbeaten, their best run for three years since they narrowly missed out on the playoffs and a shot at returning to the Premiership. Nathan Tyson, who assisted Holt's goal, may have produced one himself when in the second half he outpaced Ian Goodison, but the striker's lob dropped just a little too early for his own liking. But Forrest are on course. Easy uh, Bryce, but uh, decent finish there. Absolutely. Well, Alan, and Tran there, this was always an a good run as well. Forceful run, isn't it? Uh, and by the way, just take your, uh, just imagine this is what Newcastle. Right freak. Imagine this is Barcelona. Brilliant. That is Fantastic. so well worked. Yeah. The Colchester don't get the credit for it. I'm not, I'm not just Area. talking to Colchester all the time. If that was the Bernabeu or New Camp, what a it goal. Yep, be a played over and over again as well. What a goal. Well, Bristol City kept alive their playoff hopes with a fifth straight win against Tranmere at Prenton Park. Gary Johnson's side have steadily climbed the table after a difficult start and they took the lead after 17 minutes when Paul Brooker's header was parried by Matt Murray. Brooker reacting quickest for his 16th of the season and second in consecutive matches. City are three points behind sixth spot and entertain Swindon next before travelling to South End on the final day. Although this win improved their goal difference, they remain a long way behind the other teams in the playoff picture should they finish level on points. Mark McCammon's fourth goal since moving on loan from Brighton effectively wrapped up the points here before half time. Tranmere, meanwhile, remained just two points above the relegation places. The result left manager Brian Little frustrated, especially after seeing his side go down to 10 men for the third time in four matches. Tranmere number six, Jason McAteer, jumps past Scott Brown. But despite referee Scott Mellon having a good view of the incident, it was his assistant who suggested that McAteer had used his elbow. Having discussed the incident, the official decided it warranted a straight red card, a decision that clearly took a bemused McAteer by surprise. City went on to make their man advantage count, adding a third in the final minute to wrap up a third straight away win. Substitute Cole Scoose was tripped by Chris Tremarco inside the area. No complaints from the defender, and Craig Woodman converted to keep City nicely in touch with the leading pack. For a nil-nil stalemate, three goals followed in the final two minutes as Tranmere snatched a dramatic victory to leave the Dons sweating on their future. Defender Craig Morgan deflected Jason McAteer's free kick past his own keeper. It was Rovers' first goal in five games. Having won their last four, the Dons have given themselves a chance of avoiding the drop, and it looked as though they'd rescued a point with Isel McLeod's acrobatic 18th goal of the season. But there was one final cruel twist for Danny Wilson's side who could still survive if they beat Rotherham next week. Rovers grabbed a stoppage time winner from Delroy Facey to retain their place in League One. Uh, mutual consent. Now, Tranmere have secured their safety in League One. That was after their 2-1 victory 
over the MK Dons last weekend. But during the week, their chairman, uh, Lorraine Rogers and Brian Little, they've had a number of what they describe as detailed discussions about the club's plans and ambitions for next season. And as a result of those discussions, the club and Brian Little have reached the mutual decision that he will leave the club, having joined them in October 2003. He took them to the FA Cup quarterfinals, you might remember, in his first season. They reached the playoff semi-finals last season, but they've struggled in the bottom half of the table this season. The crowds are down, they say, as well. And despite the fact the club are safe, uh, they've decided uh, to part company. This is what Brian Little's had to say. He says, I've thought about this long and hard over recent days, and I'm sure this is right for the club and for me personally. I've really enjoyed the last three seasons here, despite the problems we've had this season. The playoffs last year and the quarterfinal FA Cup games against Millwall stand out. Finally, I would like to wish everyone at the club every success uh, for the future. So confirmation that Tranmere Rovers and Brian Little have today parted company. Uh, they've parted uh, due to mutual consent. More on that story uh, throughout the day here on Sky Sports News.